one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Thanks for watching WREL News Plus. I'm Grace Holland. The time right now is 1.30. Governor Roy Cooper declared a state of emergency ahead of Hurricane Helene's arrival as the western part of the state prepares to see serious flooding in the mountains. Cooper says more than a foot of rain is expected in some areas. The risk of flash flooding, landslides, debris slides, and slope failures should not be ignored. Take a listen. With Hurricane Helene, we have to be clear here. Heavy rains and winds are coming. Beware and prepare. Travel will be dangerous. Flooding is likely, and we are preparing for unexpected conditions. Power outages and tornadoes are also possible. He encourages all North Carolinians to tune into weather alerts today throughout the weekend. River Swift River Water Rescue crews are also deployed along, one, along with 175 soldiers along the North Carolina National Guard urban search and rescue teams. 30 firefighters, rescue, and EMS crews from Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill left for Waynesville and Haywood County this morning. Governor Cooper says North Carolina State Emergency Operations Center is in communication with local leaders and emergency management teams. A couple of other headlines we're following right now. Wake County school leaders are expected to discuss their concerns with nearly half a billion dollar plan to expand private school vouchers in the state. Superintendent Robert Taylor plans to address how House Bill 10 could impact funding and key services provided to students and families. Governor Cooper vetoed the bill. Republicans are expected to schedule a session to override the veto in November. And tonight, voters in Raleigh will have a chance to question and to have questions answered from candidates running for city council. Current District E Councilwoman Christina Jones and her opponent John Sequeria will introduce themselves. They'll also take questions about their policy. District E includes much of Raleigh's northwest corner up to Briar Creek. The event will run from 7 to 8.30 p.m. tonight and it will be held virtually over Zoom. And taking you out to a live look down on the Florida coast. This is Treasure Island in Florida. You can see the surf really starting to get churned up there and those dark clouds back there in the background as the camera's shifting there to give you a better look at things. That, of, that system, of course, is heading closer to our area. Meteorologist Anthony Baglione has a first look at today's forecast and the latest track on Helene. Hi everyone, meteorologist Anthony Baglione here on this Thursday where we continue to track, of course, Hurricane Helene in the Gulf of Mexico. It is pushing closer and closer to the panhandle there of Florida. You can see a lot of thunderstorm activity, a lot of convection, we call it, with those deep reds showing up. And so it certainly is on its way to becoming an even stronger storm system as we head into the next couple of hours. Here's a look, though, through the rest of our Thursday at our flooding risk across the state, where Asheville, for instance, is in the highest level that they go. We, for most of our viewing area, are in a low risk. It does bump up to medium west of us. But for the majority of us, this is not going to be a huge rainmaker across our part of the state, but certainly the mountains that continues again into tomorrow. Asheville, for instance, included in a high risk. What we are looking at, and I think perhaps a little bit more importantly for at least our part of the state into the rest of today and tomorrow, is a potential severe risk. Mainly for Friday morning, I do think that potential could include a few isolated tornadoes across the area. Here's future casts, some scattered showers, maybe a few thunderstorms possible for us as we head through the rest of today. We get into tonight, there could be some lulls in the precipitation, the rain, but then we get into the early part of tomorrow morning. Here's eight o'clock. Some of those storms that you see pushing in that have kind of that curved shape to them back towards Sanford, for instance, that's indicating to me that Futurecast is picking up on some rotation within the atmosphere. So that's something we'll have to watch for the morning commute even after that. Just make sure to stay weather aware tomorrow. We, of course, will be covering that completely. The Weather Center will be fully staffed here as we continue to track the, at least the potential impacts from this system. It is quick hitting. It moves out very quickly. There's 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, and we should be looking better. 80 degrees so for us through the rest of today. 82 on our Friday. The weekend looks fine. It'll still be a little bit breezy. Sunday, there may be an isolated shower or a thunderstorm. 
it's nothing that I would cancel plans for. Certainly though, later on today into tonight and Friday morning, that's when we're looking at the bulk of the rain coming through.